existence of the justice system. The real question, the only one, the fundamental question is to say, me, I have this many villas that cost me this much money, which I earn through such and such means. That is what the Senegalese want to hear. The Senegalese Democratic Party is planning to seize regional and international bodies to try to cancel the vote that lifted the parliamentary immunity of three deputies, all of them former ministers of Abdullahi Wad. Malian troops backed by French forces have begun a counter-offensive against heavily armed rebels in the north of the country. Overnight fighting saw the capture of the strategic town of Mopti from the Moajau and Tuareg rebels. French fighter jets have continued sorties over the skies of Mali to help government troops dislodge the rebels from their strongholds. We have details of that story in this report. These are the first images from the French military operation in Mali. They are Mirage fighter jets taking off from Jamena in Chad to engage in air raids against Islamist groups in Mali. The operation was announced by the French president on Friday. In the name of France, I responded to the Malian president's request for help with support from West African countries. Consequently, French armed forces brought their support this afternoon to Malian units in their fight against these terrorist elements. Support which appeared to be from the air first, at night air strikes intensified, their target was Islamist positions like this one here. On Saturday, the Malian army said it was controlling the town of Kuna, which was in the hands of armed groups until two days ago. Some 100 jihadists were reportedly killed. A French helicopter pilot also died. The aim of the military intervention was to chase the Islamists out of North Mali. The United Nations had approved the intervention back in December. The operation was to be carried out by African contingents. However, they captured Abkona by the jihadists and their advance towards Mopti accelerated things. Paris said it was urgent to respond to a friend's call. We do understand that France has offered some immediate military support to the Malian armed forces at the request of the Malian government. We are obviously con uh, consulting very closely uh, with the government of France going forward. Many questions remain unanswered. One of them is the fate of the eight French hostages held by the Islamists. Their kidnappers have said time and again that any kind of French intervention would be their death sentence. Sectarian tensions have built again in, the north, in Northern Ireland Friday night. There is still anger over the decision by Belfast city leader to stop flying the British flag year-round. CNN's Nick Robertson has more from Belfast. Rain-drenched riot police in near-freezing conditions face off against mostly teenagers. This is a working-class suburb of Belfast. There is nothing, it seems, the young rioters won't hurl at the security services. This flashpoint, just one of several around Belfast. This is typical of what the police have been facing up against on these lines. Fireworks being thrown at them, rocks being thrown, bottles being thrown at them. Look at the debris in the building, you can see it. Rocks like this, thrown at the police officers. And there's another firework right there, right there the officers. Hours earlier, a different threat. A bomb squad robot delicately inches forward, and a small part of Belfast is brought to a standstill. The centre of attention, a suspect pipe bomb, one of many in recent weeks since tensions flared and protests began following the city council's decision to limit the number of days Britain's union flag flies. Many hours later, the scare proves to be a hoax. In the protests so far, more than 107 people have been arrested, more than 66 police officers injured. It is the most sustained outbreak of violence in the 15 years since the peace agreement was signed, ending three decades of sectarian violence. There are fears of worse to come. Tensions are rising. 
almost every night since the December 3rd decision, some peaceful protests have turned into violent riots, the police bearing the brunt of the anger. Yeah, Small chip with a hamburger and a cheesy chip. We'll give you a cheesy chip, actually, you can put cheese on it. Stuart McLeese's cafe has been on the front line. Customers are staying away. So that's all on about 30% of a normal Friday. Approximately 2,000 pounds a week. That's how much we're, we've dropped. Um, one day, last week, we dropped 1,000 pounds in one day. He is closing early, telling staff to stay at home. Says four more weeks like this, and he'll be forced to shut the shop for good. Even so, he wants the union flag to be put back up. I don't think the flag should have been taken down. That is my personal opinion. I don't think the flag should have been taken down. It's been there for years. I don't see how it causes any offence to anybody. Above the city hall, the empty flagstaff, now a symbol for many Protestants like McAleese of all they fear, of being dragged out of the union with Britain and into the Republic of Ireland, a long-held goal of some Catholics. Streets here are quieter than normal. Little sympathy for protesters from those who did brave a trip to the shops. It's absolutely ridiculous. A lot of... <laughs> they have nothing else to do. Why? That's all I can say. Why? Why are they doing it? Why all the trouble? Is it worth it? But for those at the core of the protest, Nothing is dimming their claims. This is a, the Progressive Unionist Party's challenge, formal challenge, to the, the, the taking down of the flag on the designated days. We believe the process is flawed. Although talks at reconciliation are underway, they are highlighting Protestant division more than resolving grievances. More than the flag. It's more there's a whole raft of things and issues that have been... Um, uh, pushed upon the Protestant Unionist Loyalist community here and the flag was just the straw that broke the camel's back. But the violence is breaking more than the camel's back. According to the Chief Constable, the first two weeks of rioting cost six and a half million dollars. And Belfast businesses that have been recovering after years of troubles are now facing losses that are putting many of them at risk. Nick Robertson, CNN, Belfast, Northern Ireland. And before we go, a reminder of our headlines. Officials of the Gambia Revenue Authority have said that the introduction of the valid added tax has nothing to do with the recent upsurge in the price of basic commodities. The Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation has handed over a fully republished health post to the community of Mayak. Malian ground troops backed by French fighter jets have captured the strategically important town of Mopti from heavily armed militants and sectarian riots have engulfed the deeply divided city of Belfast. This as unionists and Republican supporters engage in running street battles in the city center. That brings us to the end of the news. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs.